Transformers! I wanna kiss Megatron on the lips! Hey, my name is Jobby, and we're taking a look at Transformers War for Cybertron Siege. A new Netflix show that just came out, and I binged all of it last night because of course I did. It's not like I have toy reviews to make or anything. Now before we dig right into what I liked and didn't like about the show, let me just say that this darker take on the Autobot Decepticon War was pretty sweet. But not as sweet as... Honey! Honey is a free browser extension that automatically searches for the best deals at over 30,000 online stores. For example, check out this sick-ass depressed-ass shirt. I got this thing at a site called Atsuko, and at checkout, all you gotta do is click that Honey drop-down menu, and Honey's gonna take a few seconds to find the most applicable, the most fire coupons. Ba-bam! Cha-ching! You just save some money. And remember, Honey is 100% free. Download Honey today using the link in the description and start saving a ton of money while also supporting this channel. That's joinhoney.com forward slash jobby. The original amount, yeah. The, the one that we agreed to. All right. Thank you. Now a disclaimer here, I am a huge Transformers fan, but I tried watching the show as detached from the mythos as possible. I don't want to get my biases in the way. With all that being said, let's... Dig right in. Let's talk about a few of the characters. And only a few because this show has a huge rotating cast, which is kind of a detriment because you don't get enough time to really care for all of them. I mean, Transformers mainstays like Prowl, Sideswipe, RC come out of fucking nowhere. And that's when my pander radar goes off. It's like, okay, I know who that is, but is my dumbass ex-wife gonna know? Anyway, I loved how they handled Megatron in this show. An excellent take on the character. Sure, he's presented as a heartless tyrant, but there are just some subtle moments of humanity. For example, his hesitation to use crueler interrogation methods on his old friend Ultra Magnus. His interactions with Ultra Magnus in general, it just shows that there's a lot more going inside that guy's spark other than power, conquest, I'm a bad guy, and surprisingly engaging, surprisingly depthful, and the voice actor did a fantastic job. What's this guy's name again? Jason Marnocha. Excellent job with Megatron. Optimus Prime, on the other hand, kind of a dumbass. He's kind of boiled down into the most obnoxious stereotype of Optimus Prime that you can imagine. He's got hope, but to a ridiculous degree, naive, blind optimism. Oh, I fucking get it. The part where he just stupidly walks into an obvious trap when Ultra Bagdus gives him coordinates to the Allspark. I understand that in this point of the war, the Autobots are desperate, but there's a difference between desperation and just... Idiocy. Uh, Alita One was completely correct to complain about him. Alita One did nothing wrong. I can see a lot of non-Transformers fans thinking Optimus Prime is a fucking reach. <laughs> now the thing about Bumblebee, I love the concept of what they were going for with this character. He's a unaffiliated drifter. When we open up the show, he doesn't even have the Autobot logo on his chest. Excellent. And I was thinking that throughout the course of the show, Bumblebee would find it within himself to join the Autobot cause because he sees that the Decepticons are much worse. Respecting his individuality, respecting his choices as a soldier, I wanted to see that personal growth. But no! Magical Space Ghost. So essentially, Bumblebee was forced into the Autobot cause. Lame. I think what they could have done was focus the show around Bumblebee, maybe make him the main protagonist and we're seeing the war through his eyes because he is unaffiliated. That would have been awesome. He would he could have been the audience surrogate. He could have been the perfect window to view each side of the war. And the audience, through Bumblebee's eyes, could have been convinced to join the Autobot cause as opposed to the Decepticon cause. But if I'm being completely honest, I wasn't 100% on board with the Autobot cause. I really wish that the show went deeper into the Autobot Decepticon conflict, the origins of it, how it formed, the clashing political ideologies of Optimus Prime and Megatron that led to their falling out. I want to see all of that. We get a lot of hints and nuggets about the history, and those nuggets of information are so juicy that I just, I just want more. I love the concept of Megatron being a revolutionary, someone who had an excellent point, but his revolution just went wrong and he became obsessed with power. I love all of that. I just wish we got to see it. And the hints about the Autobots being the elite class and the Decepticons rising up to the Autobot elite, just giving us that information, it made me question the Autobot cause. That probably comes down to your own political preferences, but I'm not gonna go there. I just wanted more of a reason to give 
a fuck about the Autobots. It might have been a mistake to make Megatron such a compelling character and to make Optimus Prime such a dumbass because just on the pure strength of the writing for each character, Megatron wins. I mean, please don't put Megatron simp in the comments. <laughs> The whole Impactor story, the relationship between Impactor and Ratchet, I thought was handled really well. I swear to God, though, if people start shipping Impactor and Ratchet, I shippers can burn in hell. That's all I'm saying. I like the whole Jetfire plotline, although I feel his turn might have come out of nowhere. But when he did turn, I liked his commitment. Jetfire's turn to the Autobot cause was handled better than Bumblebee's turn to the Autobot cause. And I think that's a problem. That final battle with Wheeljack trying to get the arch started up up and Optimus Prime with the Allspark throwing it into the space bridge. All that was fantastic. Gave me a little of the douche chills a little bit because I know what comes next as a Transformers fan. It's like, yeah, that that is when they go up into space and crash land on Earth. Let's talk about the animation. It was great. I would say the voice actors themselves did a great job, but there's something about the direction and the dialogue at some points that felt very stilted. I understand and respect the darker and more emotional take that they were going for in the dialogue, but everyone seems to talk like this, as if awkward pauses means emotional weight. I impress myself sometimes. Hire me, Rooster Teeth. Other than that, most of the dialogue sounds natural. Anyway, I could talk about the show for like an hour, but I'm fucking hungry. I want to stop and eat. I don't know where the poster's going to be. It'll probably be like right here, right? So two kisses that's roughly a three out of five i've seen a lot of transformers fans criticizing the show for being grim and joyless and what the fuck did you expect it's called war for cybertron not grown-ups 2 for cybertron jesus i mean it's dark but it ain't schindler's list calm the fuck down <laughs> I'll see you guys next week. Let me know what you thought in the comments. Let me know if you want me to talk about any more TV shows and movies and all that stuff. I like media. 